Hi there, this is a recording of a recent student webinar where we took a look at how to use decision trees, a key quantitative skill for A-level business students. It's the second in a series of short webinars we're running that take a look at the numerical skills that the A-level examiners want students to be confident with to use in the exam. So, a decision tree, what is it? Well, uh, it's a mathematical model that involves doing some calculations but essentially its purpose is to help management managers make decisions, in particular where there is uncertainty as to the outcomes of those decisions, but also perhaps where they're faced with a choice, which is the best choice to make. Or is it better to make to take no action, to take no choice? The decision tree works by using a series of assumptions, estimates, probabilities from which we calculate likely outcomes. We calculate these estimates, add them all up and try to work out what the net gain would be from each decision before we make a decision as to which is the best option. So it's worth remembering that decision tree uses estimates and probabilities. Therefore, when we come to evaluate the uh, outputs from the decision tree, we can very usefully question whether or not these estimates and probabilities have been made uh, perhaps carefully, cautiously, whether or not, whether or not they're overly optimistic. There is a, a, a simple approach to building the decision tree. It's pretty unlikely you'll be asked to, do, to build one from scratch with the information. You may be asked to complete uh, a partially built tree or perhaps just to calculate and interpret information given. But here we go. Let's just go through the four steps. The first thing we do is we identify what options are facing us. What are the choices? For each outcome, option, we add some possible outcomes. And in most cases in your exam, there'll be two outcomes from each option. Occasionally there might be three. For each outcome, we uh, an option, we add the costs of taking the option. What are the probabilities that these outcomes might happen? And what are the financial results from each outcome? Those are going to be useful pieces of information to do some calculations because we then calculate the expected values from those uh, outcomes and the net gain. We're going to have a look at how we do that with a couple of examples, but that's the four step approach. So step one, we have to make a decision. Now, typically in a decision tree, the decision to be made is represented by a square and outputting from the square are the options available to you, typically as lines. So in this case, there is a choice or an option one, a choice or option two. And of course, there's always the option to do nothing. Step two, we add possible outcomes. And again, typically you'll be given two possible outcomes for each choice. So in this case, uh, and by the way, uh, circles in a decision tree represent the uncertain outcomes, the possible outcomes. In this case, for option one, we've got two possible outcomes, outcome A and outcome B. For option two, we've also got two possible outcomes, outcome A and outcome B. And of course, if you do nothing, there'll be no outcome. Step three is we then add in the information. As I say, it's most likely that a lot of this information will be provided to you uh, already if it's a partially complete decision tree. But for the sake of completeness, we add in the cost of each option. And then for each outcome, there's two pieces of information. There is the probability that it will happen, P, and there is the result if it happens. So for the example there, option one, outcome A, it has a cost. And there is a probability of a result. And we multiply the probability of the result to work out the expected value. Now let's just spend just a little little time reminding you, hopefully you've covered probabilities, perhaps, uh, well, certainly if you did GCSE maths, this may come as a bit of a shock to think that you might actually use that in a A-level business exam, but it's true. Probability. Probability is all about percentages, isn't it? It's the percentage chance that something will occur or not. And therefore, it should range somewhere between one, which is certainty, and zero, which is no chance. In your decision tree, you will be given probabilities, and the outcomes of all of them when added together should equal one. They will equal one. So, uh, just to think about probabilities, I'm going to put four things on the screen here. I want you to decide, maybe just pause the video for uh, half a minute or so, and try and work out which of these do you think has the lowest probability, the lowest percentage chance of happening. Is it the probability of tossing a coin just once and the result being heads? 
What about the probability of winning the first round of rock, paper and scissors? What is the probability of an A-level business student drawn at random from the thousands taking it of getting a B grade or higher in the new A-levels in June 2017? And what is the probability of either Manchester City or Manchester United winning the Premier League, which at the time of recording is the season 2016-2017? in early, uh, late, late January, early Feb. Pause the video, have a think, which of those has the lowest probability? And if you pause it and you're back with me, and if you didn't, we're going straight through, what do you think the answer is? Of course, some probabilities can be calculated fairly accurately, can't they? That's the point about this quick challenge. Tossing a coin and the result being heads, well, it's just about 0.5. Not absolutely 0.5, I guess there's a very outside chance that the coin could land on its side. <clears throat> but I would say it's 0.5. Winning the first round of rock, paper, scissors? Well, you know, mathematically, the percentage is one in three. You know, there are nine different outcomes. Three of them will result in a win for you. You might argue it's not a game of chance. It's a game of skill, but we won't go there. An A-level business student drawn at random getting a B grade or higher? Well, we don't know, of course, do we? There's an uncertainty about the future there. We don't know how these exams will be marked, how people will do. But if we used previous information... For example, summer 2016, the probability is around about 0.42, 42% or so of available business students got a B grade or higher. So there's uncertainty though, and similarly on the last one, this is about judgment, isn't it? Whether you think Manchester City or Manchester United winning the Premier League this season, well, partly it depends when you ask the question. Ask the question now, maybe it's less likely than if you asked the question at the start of the season. But it might also be influenced by your opinions, by your loyalties to one side or another. I, I think the, the probability of it happening is less than 10%. But you might disagree with me. And that's the point about probabilities. That's the key thing about decision trees, that they involve people expressing a judgment, making an estimate. And that's, if you like, the key evaluation point you can always use on decision trees, that probabilities nearly always, perhaps apart from tossing a coin, nearly always involve some judgment. So, on to the calculations quickly. How, how do we use these probabilities? Well, the expected value of an outcome, we simply take the financial result and multiply it by the probability. We'll see this in a second. And then the net gain, we add up all the expected values of each, of each outcome, take away their cost to work out the net gain. So let's have a look at how we do this to see what kind of numbers come out. Here's uh, a simple example. I'll Put this information in the table there i'll show you how the decision tree gets put together then we'll do a calculation uh year 13 student joseph is deciding whether it's best to either get a place at university to study uh, business psychology or should he take the advice of his careers advisor and uh, take a place as a sales apprentice at a prestigious multinational in other words start working rather than go to uni what he's done is worked out what he might earn in the first five years in employment so if he goes to uni and if he takes the apprenticeship and he's worked out there's a different cost of the option, it's more costly to go to uni. He's worked out the different probabilities of high pay and low pay. And he's worked out the result of those high pay, low pay outcomes. So we've got the data, all the data we need from decision tree. Let's uh, take that data. Well, if you want to have a go, of course, maybe stop the video now and have a go at constructing your own decision tree. Well worth having a go. If not, I shall continue. Well, there is our classic decision tree. Two choices, go to uni, take the apprenticeship, or do nothing, probably not an option. Uh, we know there's two outcomes for option one, high and low pay, similarly two outcomes for option two, high and low pay. Let's put the information in. We were told it was 60 to go to uni, 10 at the cost of apprenticeship, the probabilities we've added in, notice that for each outcome, the two probabilities equal 1. So 0 0.7 plus 0 0.3 equals 1. Similarly, 0 0.6 plus 0 0.4 equals 1. So the probabilities of each outcome should equal, for each choice, should equal 1. And we were told the different results, the financial results of those four possible outcomes. Uh, getting paid more over five years if he goes to uni. Still getting pretty well paid in an apprenticeship, but still less and going to uni. Who knows whether those are right? Those are his estimates. So, have a go. Have a go at calculating the expected value. Now, I've done the first one for you. Let me take you through it. Then I'll ask you guys to have a go 
to work out the expected value and net gain. So if it goes to uni, we simply multiply the probabilities by the financial results. So 0 0.7 times 250, 0 0.3 times 50. Those are the two outcomes, the two probabilities. Add those two together comes to an expected value of 190,000. But don't forget, we have to knock off the cost of that option. So it's 190,000 take away 60,000 of cost, a net gain of 130. Have a go, pause the video, have a go and calculate the value, net gain of that option there. Let's go back to it for the apprenticeship, please. Have a go and then I'll continue when you start the video again. And uh, if you guys have been having a go at calculating the, the cost of the apprenticeship and the net gain, let's have a look at the numbers. Well, hopefully you came up with a number that was £110,000. You should be able to see where we got the numbers from. Multiplying by the probability by each financial result, 0 0.6 times 150 is 90. 0 0.4 times 75,000 is 30. Add them together, a total value of 120, but take off the £10,000 cost and net gain of 110. Now, which is the best decision? Well, you might argue the figure suggests that university is a better option than apprenticeship, but of course, the smart student will, will point out the fact that the two numbers are very close. So it's hard to make a distinction between the two. Uh, and of course, it then all comes down to the assumptions that are being made about the high and low pay and about the probabilities. So it's easily, easily possible to imagine that the apprenticeship could come out higher if you use very slightly different assumptions. So on the screen there, I'm just going to uh, give you one final calculation maybe to have a go at if you want some more practice on decision trees. Again, pause the video and have a go. So for option X, we're giving some information for option Y. There's one more calculation to calculate here. Don't forget the sums of probabilities should add up to one. And I've not given you the probability of failure for uh, two options, option X and option Y. So have a go at those. And if you pause the video and you're coming back, welcome back. If you've had a go, let's have a look at your numbers. If not, uh, let me take you through the answer. Uh, well, which option had the highest expected net value? Let's have a look. Well, first of all, you had to work out the probability of failure. So, of course, it's 1 less the probability of success. So 0 0.2 for option X, 0 0.4 for option Y. If you then work through the expected values, you should have worked out that option X had a net gain of 330,000. Option Y, 290,000. So option X appears to be the best option. Final thoughts. Don't forget decision trees, a bit like investment appraisal, in particular net present value discounted cash layers are very sensitive to the assumptions that are made, the probabilities. It only takes, it takes a small change in one of the probabilities or the, the financial results or the costs to come up with a slightly or very different outcome so it's always worth challenging uh, the assumptions that are made in decision trees and to point out how the decision could be different if the assumptions if the assumptions changed uh, but it's also important to recognize that decision trees are just one part of the different methods that management can use to help with decision making there we go guys that was an overview of the content we covered in our recent student webinar on decision trees